English for imma'a. But he went on to say, he explained what is imma'a. Imma'a is when people are good, you're good. When people are bad, you're bad. You know? You're with the people. Wherever they go. You're the sheep, yes. The sheep in the flock. Flock goes that way, you're going that way. Goes this way, jumping off a cliff, you're jumping off the cliff with them. That's imma. Also, that's like we say, is a twig in the stream. In the stream, you know, the water running down the stream. When the twig falls in the water, where does it go? Does it go upstream? It just go, goes with the stream, right? Or like a leaf in the wind. When the wind blows that way, the leaf goes that way. When the wind shifts this way, the leaf goes this way. That's imma. Prophet ﷺ said, the believer, the Muslim, should not be imma. So if that's what peer pressure does, when the group wants to go this way, you go that way. When the group wants to go this way, you're going that way. Then that's no good. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, you shouldn't be like that. What does that mean? It means what? Huh? Yeah, you're following, but not just following, you're a blind follower. You're a blind follower. You can't make up your own mind. Really, it's a sign of weakness. It's weakness of Iman, but it's also weakness of personality. You know? You don't have a mind of your own. You can't think for yourself. Is that good? No, it's not good at all. It's dangerous. Yeah, because if the group that you're with happens to be, you know, doing things that are really bad, then you can get yourself in serious trouble. Inshallah, day after tomorrow, you will hear some stories about young people your ages who were in ma'a and ended up in jail. Ended up with many years to serve. Because they were imma'a. So the believer, the Muslim, is not imma'a. Also, Prophet Muhammad had said about imitating people. This is the blind following. Where people are this way, you want to be that way. People are that way, you want to be that way. He said, Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. Whoever imitates a people, is like them. It's just like them. It's one of them. So this is not a good state to be in. Muslim must have his or her own personality. Each person has to know who they are. Because each person has to answer to Allah. Your friends can't answer. When you have to stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment, can you call on your friend from your peer group and say, Hey, can you answer Allah here for me, please? Allah is asking some tough questions here. I can't answer these. Can you please help me out now? No. It doesn't work. You can't do that. You have to answer for yourself. Each person has to answer for himself or herself. That's why being imma or imitating people is no good. Unless the people that you're imitating are good people. If they're good people, then it's good. But most of the time, people are not imitating good people. Most of the time, we're imitating our peer group. We want to be like them. So, if we look at this situation, we have to say that the root of this, where does this come from? These ideas about fashion. Can we get our list up here again, please? All the things. Go back to the top. Where's the top of the list? We have music on the top. Where do you think that the music comes from? The music which is haram. 
Because we know in Islam there's music which is halal, isn't there? Huh? You didn't know there is halal music? Yeah, there's halal music. Do you have any idea what halal music is? Use of Islam? Yeah, he makes some halal music. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Anashid? Yeah. Some anashid, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Okay, music which doesn't have bad language. That's true. Because if you have music and the people are singing and what they're singing or saying has dirty language, then of course it's haram. Okay, what else? If it has in it what? Huh? Having it what? Arabic music. Stand up. If it has in it what? Huh? Arabic? If it has in it Arabic, it's haram? It's good. Well, no, no, no. If it has Arabic, it could have Arabic swear words. You know, they have swear words in Arabic too. So, it's not just having Arabic. Huh? Instruments. Is it all instruments? Huh? Okay, except for the duff. Right? The duff, which is like a hand drum, tambourine. All the other instruments, all of the other instruments are haram. Why? Okay, now if we're going to try to go through all the whys here for all this list here, we might not be able to finish this uh, session on time. But, since music is a particular problem, it is important for us to look at a little bit of why. Why are these musical instruments haram? Is it because of their shape? Like guitar has a shape, maybe it looks something like a woman's shape. Is that why it's haram? No? Okay. So, what about a piano? Huh? Why are musical instruments haram? They hurt your ears? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know uh, about that. What, why do you think? They make terrible music. <laughs> they make terrible music? Well, maybe some people don't think it's terrible. Mm -hmm. They give false hope. In what sense? Ah, sugar coats, bad things. But some people say maybe sugar coats, good things. What if I'm saying some good things and I add this music along, it makes it nicer? Uh huh. Okay, brother is saying that it's um, hypnotic and addictive. What do you think about addictive? Huh? I think we'd agree on that one, right? Definitely addictive. Uh, you get used to it, you don't want to let it go. If you don't have it, then you start shaking, right? Where's my music? Huh? Uh -huh. Music. Well, musical instruments, they have a way into the heart. They have a way of sneaking into the heart and getting a hold of the heart. 
in such a way that 10 years from now, your favorite song that you have today, 10 years from now, you've forgotten the song. But if you hear two or three notes from that song, you'll remember the whole song again. has a way of captivating the heart. Those musical instruments gives it a more, a stronger ability or power to go in and captivate the heart. And this is where the addiction comes from. So because of that, Prophet Muhammad he told us that we are not supposed to use these instruments. And he said that in the time to come, people will make halal these wind and string these instruments. He called ma'azif. He will make them, they will make them halal. Meaning that they're not halal. They're not halal. So, uh, we have some points from the girl side. Uh, one of the problems facing the girls, young girls, is gossip. Alright? Gossip. But we said, and the gossip is a product also of peer pressure. Where you sit with people and they start talking about other people. Maybe you don't feel that you should really be talking about these people. It's not really right. Because gossip really is, ham is haram. Prophet had said, لا يدخل الجنة نمام نمام is a person who spreads gossip says the Prophet ﷺ says they won't enter paradise so it means gossip is not a good thing right right okay so what happens we said that this peer pressure which is made stronger by the media what you watch on television we talked about the TV the movies all of these things it makes these problems which we have in our hearts bigger now where does all this come from who is behind this Satan Shaitan yes Satan is behind it and Allah warned us to beware of Satan because he is a clear enemy to us. He is an avowed enemy. He has swore he is going to misguide each and every one of us. He is our enemy, Satan. So what does he do? He puts temptation before us. See, all of these things you want to do. Put our list back up there again, please. Can we see the list? Where is our list? Back to the top. To the top of the list. Music. Girls. We're going to look at girls and that later on. Sunday we have a whole session on girlfriends and boyfriends. So we'll leave that to later. TV. Drugs. Smoking cigarettes. Parties. Gangs, body piercing, disobeying parents. I mean, all of these things, if we look, there are good things to replace these. There are good things that can replace these, every one of them. Music, it is the haram form of music which is not allowed. But there is halal music. There is plenty of halal music. But you know what Satan does? The same thing that he did to Adam and Eve. What did Satan do to Adam and Eve? Huh? What did he do? You don't know. You know who Adam was, right? Who was he? The one who what? The one who created us. Oh boy, you got a problem here, man. You, you, got, a, you got a serious problem. <laughs> Adam didn't create us. 
Huh? Who, who, was, Ad, who was Adam? See, Adam was the first human being. Uh, he didn't create us. Okay? We came from him, that's true, but he didn't create us. Huh? He didn't have a test tube and a chemistry set and he made the rest of us. No, no. Huh? Yeah, he's, he's our great, 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 great grandfather. Okay? That's Adam. But what did Satan do to Adam? 